This is an express gentle yoga class. We're gonna focus on our hips today. Um, so I'm, we're gonna start with a reclining butterfly shape and we're gonna do some stretches with a yoga strap. So if you have a yoga strap, get it that, put it next to you um, so you can reach it easily. You know, it doesn't have to be too close, but close enough to reach. If you don't have a yoga strap, anything that will allow you to hold onto your foot with relative ease. So you could use a scarf or a um, towel. I've used a kitchen towel quite effectively <laughs> many times in the past, uh, but anything that will do that for you um, will be a good fit. Um, an old belt, whatever you got nearby. Oh. Your practice and my practice might get invaded by tiny uh, furry creatures. <laughs> so. <laughs> or little kids, we'll just roll with the bunches, y'all. <laughs> Tree demolishing <laughs> and otherwise. All right, so I'm gonna lie down. I've got this blanket here so that I can do uh, a little bit of support for my legs where I like it. I start with it up near the top and sort of check in. So I want there to be a little sensation of stretch in my inner thigh, but I don't want it to put a ton of pressure in my hip sockets. So having some support for the thigh bones to rest on, I find very useful in that way. And then I'm just snuggling my shoulder blades underneath me and letting my arms kind of hang out wherever they want to go. Uh, if you want, you can do different arm positions out to the sides or up over your head. So find what works for you on that level. And then we'll take a few moments just to center ourselves. Now, for me, mindfulness, uh, it, the whole practice is a mindful practice, or at least we're trying for it to be. And mindfulness is a kind of dance within the present moment. Our brain is gonna drag us into different locations. We're gonna get distracted by things in the environment. There might be little things in our body that tell us to pay attention. We might check in with the breath from time to time, make sure that there's a kind of consciousness around the breath. You can also let the breath do its thing. Your body is really good at breathing generally. Uh, <laughs> it will do it on its own without a lot of attention on your part. But you can check in, make it a little deeper, a little smoother, kind of get into the breath. But mostly what we're doing is we're just using the biggest portion, maybe half of our mind, <laughs> to uh, be present, right? So we kind of open up the aperture a little bit and not focused on any one particular body part or focused on any one particular thought that rolls through but sort of letting everything happen and not focusing on anything is the idea. So to settle into that, it helps me to start with the kind of noticing my environment and placing myself here. So there's, you know, a temperature in the room that I can feel on my skin. You know, there's <laughs> various smells and sounds and other things that may present themselves. I like to take a moment to just check out with the quality of the light and everything else that's around me, just so I center myself right here in this time and place. And then I take a little bit of time just to check back in with my body. We're gonna stay a little bit longer, about another minute. If I haven't done any intentional breathing today, then I might spend the time doing that. Just breathing a little more deeply, giving the rib cage a chance to expand. Let's get some movement going in the breathing apparatus of the body, the diaphragm, the ribs, a little bit around the chest. Two more breaths where we are. Now, 
I'm gonna bring my legs out straight. So I'm just gonna slide the heels away from me until I've got, for the most part, straight legs. <laughs> I've still got this blanket under here for now. Um, so there's a little bit of a bed there, but you get the idea. I'm just gonna give them a little shimmy and then I'll slide this blanket out and keep it nearby just in case. But letting the legs rest for a moment, I just wanna notice any sensations that are there. So I'm gonna narrow my focus in and just pay attention to like the inner thigh and the um, sensations that might be kind of hanging out with the legs themselves. <laughs> just like the tickly sensation of my pants touching the back of my knee. Just all of those things, just noticing the sensations that are here. And then also with my legs straight, noticing how like any tugging or lifting of the pelvis. So if my hip flexors are tight, then with the legs all the way stretched out, I'm gonna notice a kind of pulling on the pelvis. So just notice that, because we're gonna do a little hip flexor release. So we're gonna bring the legs into constructive rest. And this is a position that you, it's not exactly the same for everyone, but what we're looking for is a position of the feet so that there is no gripping or contraction in the muscles in the inner thigh and no gripping or contraction in the muscles on the outer hip or the glute. Um, so if my legs are too close together, my inner thighs are gonna kick on to try to hold them steady there. So I can feel the inner thigh muscle contract if I bring my legs out too wide, then I feel the outer hip contract to try to hold my legs steady in that position. Whereas if I find somewhere in between those, there's a place where there's neither of the um, areas have to contract to hold me and my pelvis kind of tilts into a neutral position. So there's not a forward tilt or a backward tilt, it's pretty close to exactly neutral and my low back has a curve under it, but not a really big arch, right? So for me, sometimes that low back could be a little bit hyper lordotic. It could be a little hyper bent um, or curved. So it's good to find that neutral position. And everybody's spine is a little different. We all have slightly different curvature. So you're looking for what feels like neutral to you. So the pelvis feels level. So that's constructive rest. And just holding this position for a while can help release tension from the hip flexors. We're gonna do a little movement pattern that I find really useful. So just to begin with, just take kind of stock of how it feels here, of the, you know, for me, like I can feel a tendon right here on the front of my hip quite prominently. It's really easy to find. And it almost feels like, um, you know, it pushes up against the skin a little bit. So I can, you know, feel it with my thumb quite readily. So that's, you know, a tendon that's coming from the bowl of my pelvis going up over the front of my hip. That is the, the more tendinous part of this bigger muscle that lives in this part of the body. Um, beneath the uh, uh, rib the abdominals there and behind all my internal organs, just I'm pointing to the front, but it's really more in the back. So I'm gonna take my right toes and lift them. And as best I can, I'm just gonna glide the leg out. Now, if your floor surface is a little sticky, you might have to slightly like take the weight off the heel. Just do your best to glide as smoothly as you can. So we're gonna straighten the leg all the way out. And with the toes pointing straight up for the first few rounds here, we're gonna lengthen through the body. Like we're trying to stretch all the way from our armpit down through the heel. <laughs> Then we're gonna glide the leg back to that constructive rest position and just pause right there, okay? And then toes up, glide out. We're gonna do three of those. Come back and pause. And already I'm noticing just a slight difference in sensation in the front of my hip. So gliding out and then pause, All right? Come back and pause. So now we're gonna do a little external rotation. So I'm gonna glide out, stretch, and while I'm stretching, rotate the legs so the toes wind up pointing out a little bit toward the right. Then gliding back if I can with that external rotation, bringing the leg back and pause. And in the pause, I try to relax every muscle here in my hip. So going out, 
as I'm stretching, rotating the leg, pulling it back in, bringing it back to the center, and then relaxing the muscle. And then one more like that. And this is a really simple movement pattern, but for me it has pretty profound impact on how um, intense my hip flexors are pulled. So now we're gonna do three going internally. So we're gonna go out, toes pointing up, rotate the toes towards the left as much as I can. And it's not from the foot, but from the hip. Then draw the leg back in, rotate back and pause. This is a much smaller range of motion for me. So going out, rotating in, <laughs> coming back. I've got shenanigans going on, hang on. <laughs> One more time, going out, rotating in, oh, coming back, and then pausing. And I'm just gonna pause for a moment. What are you doing? <laughs> now, <laughs> if I check in with my hip. So before, if I put my thumb here on the front of my hip, it was really easy for me to find the tendon there in the front. And I can still find that tendon right here on the left side, but on the right side, I no longer feel that pushing against my skin. If I dig my thumb in there, I can find it, but it's not prominently pushing forward. So for me, a change has occurred. This right side has relaxed a little bit. The muscle is relaxed back into my back and I find that really pleasant. So I'm gonna do the other side. You may or may not notice a difference, but it's fun to check in. All right, so we're gonna stretch the left one out. And again, the whole length of the leg, toes pointing straight up for the first three. And then coming back, stretching out, lengthening, coming back, <laughs> stretch it out, lengthening, coming back. And again, I just relax the muscle in between. Now I'm gonna do the three external rotations. So going out, rotating to the left, coming back, and then center, going out, rotating, oh, coming back, center. One more of those. And then there's gonna be three internal rotations. So coming out, rotating inward, coming back, relaxing, <laughs> out, rotating inward, coming back, relaxing. I have a tendency, if I'm not careful, to overdo it with the ankle, so I'm really trying to pay attention to that rotation coming from <laughs> the uh, hip. So I'm gonna do a little change up here because <laughs> otherwise I fear that I will never get any peace. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> now, now I might get left alone a little bit. <laughs> All right, so then checking in <laughs> with my hip. And again, my left hip, now that tendon has like kind of relaxed back a little bit into my hip socket or hip, uh, the bowl of my pelvis at, at the very least. So I find that helpful. Um, if this is helpful for you and you have chronically tight hip flexors, then this little movement pattern might be useful to do um, every day. Um, so you can put it in your back pocket, take it home with you, <laughs> use it later. So I've got my right leg up on top of my left leg and I'm just gonna do a little side to side movement here. And your leg might drop all the way to the floor or it might be a really tiny range of motion. I'm just going until I feel sensation. So coming over this way, I feel the sensation in my right uh, external hip rotator <laughs> area in that kind of under the glute place. And then going the other way, it's pretty easy. It's just a twist for my spine. But just notice like, where do you feel the sensation? And then go to that point might change as you go along. Sometimes this movement pattern drags me down my mat, so <laughs> I'm just being aware of that. 
Now come into the center. I'm going to grab hold of this right leg and this is where I'm going to get the strap out. And we're going to hold this, um, each of these th three poses, we're going to do three separate poses. Um, we will hold them for about a minute and a half each around <laughs> a minute and a half. That's about the length of time that is really useful when it comes to um, a fascial release. So underneath the skin, there's you know epidermis, then the dermis, then underneath all of that, there's a layer of fascia that sort of holds the skin <laughs> onto the body in place. Around each muscle, there's a layer of fascia that holds the muscle together. And then within bundles of muscle fibers, there's more fascia. And that's really the tissue that we're looking at trying to make a change in. And mostly the change that we can make is hydration. And the way that we get there is by putting just enough pressure on it and then holding the pressure for a while. So that's to release the fascia and any tension that we have because there's not enough movement um, or hydration in that tissue. Now the muscle itself, we are uh, potentially encouraging things to happen to. So that might be a little less hold, right? So we're if we're trying to make a difference in the way it feels in our hip, then one of the things that we want to consider is holding poses long enough that we get that full benefit. And about 90 seconds is a minimum there. 90 seconds to two minutes um, is about that minimum amount that we want to hang out with a, sh a pose. If it feels like too much for you, then don't hang out that long. Um, you can kind of build your way to that. So I've got a stretch that's kind of even through the whole back of my leg. I feel it in the calf muscles. I feel it in my hamstrings, but I don't want it to be so sharp that I feel it all in one spot. So if you need to take your leg a little further away or adjust the angle, like you can do a little bit of a rotation out or in to find the kind of most even stretch through the back of the leg. And again, if it starts to feel like it's super sharp in a knee or in a hip area, or where it attaches at the sit bone, then I want to modify the pose. We're going to stay for about like three more big breaths. Now I'm taking my leg out to the side and on the way, I'm going to take this pillow and put it right up against the edge of my hip. That just gives me a little kind of place from the outer part of my thigh to rest. And it makes the inner part of the, um, the inner thigh portion of the stretch a little less intense for me. So you can add support under your leg. You can let the leg go out by itself. That is entirely up to you. Again, like you can modify the pose a little bit. Bending the knee here, I find sometimes helpful for like evening the stretch out through the whole inner portion of the thigh and the yeah, kind of this inner portion of the calf a little bit. Um, but by contrast, bending the knee on the other, when I was working mostly with the back of the leg, felt more like um, it drove the sensation towards my sit bone. Whereas with the side, the inner thigh, a little bend in the knee seems more pleasant. So there sometimes rules apply to one part of the body, but not to another part. Sometimes rules apply to one person, not another person. You should always feel your poses and, you know, feel a little bit free to try slightly different um, adjustments, bend the knee flex your foot, point your toes. Um, see if those kinds of things help you find the best possible part of, or um, arrangement for your pose. So we're going to take a nice big breath and then we're going to come back through the center here and go across the body and I'm going to lose the strap for this foot and just bend my knee and bring it over for a twist. So I'm going to hang out with this twist. You can, again, move the pillow over and put it under that side. Um, I might do that later. <laughs> right now, everything's pretty steady. Uh, and your arm can adjust like up like the Statue of Liberty 
or like a cactus or a goalpost or like a wing. Sometimes I like the arm down a little lower. So you can adjust the arm and see how that stretch through the chest fits for you. Oh, if there is one at all. Take about three more breaths here. And then on my exhale, coming back to the center, I'm just gonna come back temporarily to this constructive rest position, um, oh, just to give myself a little moment. And notice in this position is there a difference between the right side and the left side you can also straighten the legs all the way out and notice if there's any difference here now for me the right side feels like this side of my um, waist and my lower back feel like they're in a more neutral position than on this side there feels like this part of my pelvis is tilted a little bit and the leg feels a little longer and softer now if I were to actually measure things, I don't know that that would be the case. Um, <laughs> it may be a, like a teeny tiny bit of difference. Um, but what the fascia that lives under the layer of our skin um, in particular is very highly um, enervated. There's a lot of nerve endings and a lot of feedback that comes from that fascia. So this gives us, you know, a lot of the kind of sensation of touch that we get, you know, sensations of pressure and that sort of thing. So the fascia is really sensitive. And if we might be able to feel how that sequence of poses has changed things in the leg and the hip. So just notice for yourself, we're going to do the other side. So I'm going to grab this strap and just make sure it's handy and then putting my left leg up on top of my right thigh and kind of rocking back and forth like I did to start out with on the other side. And this is just sort of a primer for the twist. It, uh, for me, a little bit of movement and then a little bit of static pose is a nice combination for releasing tension from the body, for um, <laughs> feeling more at home. Okay, so I'm going to do one more over that direction and then I'll go ahead and put the strap on my foot. I'm going to turn just a little bit here so I'll have room for the side stretch. Alright, so trying to find that sort of evenness of stretch through the whole back of the leg with whatever uh, prop you might be using. I'm trying to find the point where my pelvis is not being sort of impacted too much. I'm not lifting my hips up off the ground. And then just hold and steady for some nice big breaths. So if you only have a little bit of time to do yoga, these three stretches with the strap are, uh, you know, are super impactful and super easy. So I sometimes do them at night before I go to sleep just to relieve pressure from my low back, and make it a little easier to kind of hang out <laughs> and go to sleep. And I do them in bed, frankly, like <laughs> it's soft and nice, why not? So we'll do three more breaths. And 
take a big inhale. And then with the exhale, I'm gonna take the leg out to the side. And again, I have this pillow here. You can use something like that for support or you can not use any support. As seems appropriate for you. And for me, sometimes I just sort of experiment for the first little bit. And then when I find something that feels just right, I try to relax the rest of my body around it. Take a nice big breath. And then we'll take ourselves over into our twist. And again, I'm going to lose the strap, but you can leave it on if you like. probably not aware of all the shenanigans that are going on around here, but there are shenanigans going on around here. <laughs> I'm doing my best to come back to the breath. <laughs> so we're going to stay for about three more breaths. You can certainly roll back onto your back if you like. I'm just going to keep going and roll onto my side so I can sit up. That's where we're going to wind up. <laughs> so you may not be ready to sit up right away, but when you are, bring yourself to a seated position. Oh. We'll do one more pose. For our, uh, <laughs> for our practice here. Now for some of us, this pose is um, gonna be uh, <laughs> uh, best done back on our back, who knows? <laughs> it, might, it might turn into that. But if you could do it, you'll bring either your knees on top of each other, so they stack up, or your shins on top of each other, or you can just sit cross-legged with one leg in front. So we just get as close together in the center as you can and then lean back for a moment and get nice and tall. And for some of us kind of leaning back is gonna be the best balance for the hips. For some of us sitting up tall is gonna be the right amount. And then for more, for some of us leaning forward is gonna be the right amount. And you can lean forward all the way to the point where you either your chest rests on your thighs or your elbows touch the ground, whatever happens first. For me, I don't need to go that far. I like just a little bit and I'm feeling the sensation in the hip. So we're just gonna stay there.
here for about another four or five breaths. up lean back unwind the legs and before I do the other side just for a moment just pausing oh, before setting myself up for the other side now if you need a little longer pause take a longer pause and again kind of starting with a tall spine and trying to find the spot where it m makes just the right amount of sensation happen in the outer hip. We don't want the knee to be in any kind of trouble. So we're just going to the point where we feel that in the outer hip. Take a nice deep breaths. four or five more breaths here. I'm gonna inhale, lean back, unwind the legs. shimmy <laughs> oh. and then depending on the kind of time you've got in your life you could lie down for a bit or just pause in a seated position for a bit and notice how the practice left you and then when you get up hopefully your hips will feel amazing <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for a little express yoga for your hips. Have a great rest of your day, yogis. Namaste. <laughs>